with Strival, we saw the manufacturer whining and dining doctors. They called it education, but in fact, it's marketing. In the real world, this happens all the time. There are hundreds of thousands of these events every year where doctors are whined and dined and it's disguised as education. Now, these things work. Companies wouldn't put all that money into these lavish events if it didn't work, if it didn't end up with an increase in prescriptions, because that is the key aim of these so-called educational events. Gifts from pharmaceutical companies to doctors are a real problem because it means that the patient doesn't get truly objective, unbiased advice in the best interest because the doctor's been influenced by the pharmaceutical company that bought him or her meals or sent them on excursions or paid for trips or paid them consulting fees. Patients really deserve to have independent, objective advice that's just based on the patient's needs and not on any other conflicts of interest that the doctor has. Gifts include cars, refrigerators, air condition system and houses and clinics and uh, even domestic animals in case of uh, developing countries like Pakistan are being gifted like buffaloes and uh, even uh, school fees of uh, kids are being uh, uh, offered by the companies. It's unfortunate that when they have big medical meetings, they're usually at incredibly lavish resorts in fantastic destinations. And um, it's, again, unfortunate that the majority of these meetings are not educational in nature. They're more recreational in nature and uh, just under the guise of medical education. One really outrageous thing that's happening now, in one state in the United States, it has been banned by law for pharmaceutical companies to spend more than $50 a year to take a doctor out to dinner. So what are, the, what are the pharmaceutical companies doing now? They're taking out the nurses and the secretaries, taking them to restaurants they've never been to before, again trying to influence the doctor indirectly rather than directly. Sporting event tickets, uh, trips to magnificent destinations, uh, the sponsoring of little league teams that a physician's child might be on. Um, anything that can create a sense of entitlement with a physician is fair game. When doctors receive gifts, they pres prescribe more irrationally. They prescribe more drugs rather than less. CI is calling for a global ban on gifts to doctors. For us, the evidence is clear. This presents no medical value, no benefit to consumers, and equals bribery. We should not stand for this, and there needs to be concerted global action to put a stop to this very unethical marketing practice. As we saw with the marketing of Strivor, the manufacturer sponsored a patient group called Unmotivated Anonymous. In the real world, this happens all the time. Something like two-thirds of patient groups now take some money from drug or device manufacturers. It's a hidden form of promotion, and it can distort the way in which those patient groups behave. We see that drug companies are using patient groups in far more creative ways than we've seen in the past as a means to circumvent global bans on direct-to-consumer advertising. While we understand that patient groups in many cases are very close allies of the consumer movement, what we are gravely concerned about is the lack of transparency between the relationships of these patient groups and their financial ties to the companies that sponsor them. Uh, the drug industry will utilize all different facets of media and marketing campaigns. Patient groups are just another one of those facets. And if you've got a new compound that's going to treat uh, restless leg syndrome, you can be sure that there's a restless leg foundation. The pharmaceutical industry would like to see patient organizations as partners, you know, as, uh, as advocacy officers for a, um, a cause or an agenda that they would like to promote. So, for instance, we see some patient groups being extremely vocal about the reimbursement of specific drugs uh, or new drugs that are more expensive. This really minimizes 
consumer access to independent and reliable and non-promotional based information, which we believe is a fundamental consumer right. Everything a drug company does works. Drug companies have incredibly deep pockets and uh, the insiders within industry know that every single dollar you spend in a marketing fashion will net you 10 or a hundred dollars in return in market share. If that patient organization is dependent on that funding to be sustainable, so to develop their line of work, their activities, wouldn't that impair their judgment? Wouldn't that be a conflict of interest? Will they be able to come uh, out in the public and say, uh, between this drug and this drug, uh, will, will they be able to make a comparative choice? Fundamental to responsible corporate behavior is transparency. While we do believe that patient groups do need funding and that drug companies can be a viable source of funding, we firmly assert that this needs to go through an independent body and that the financial links between drug companies and patient groups need to be disclosed. Informing the public is another key promotional strategy of the pharmaceutical industry. We saw it with Strivor, the manufacturer made infomercials that have been run on TV channels and so on in order to inform the public. But this is not information, it's advertising. It's part of the marketing strategies for the latest, most expensive medicines. So why are pharmaceutical companies doing this TV ads and magazine ads to consumers touting some mysterious condition that they now persuade you that you've gotten trying to buy their drugs? They're trying to make money. They're not trying to educate you. They're not trying to give you the full information to make an informed choice whether you need drugs at all, whether you have this condition at all, whether other ways like lifestyle changes might be useful. They're not trying to do that. They're trying to do one thing and one thing only, sell more drugs. Drug companies are consistently finding new and innovative ways to reach the ordinary consumer in order to promote their drugs. Um, a very recent uh, and interesting example from Europe is the concept of Pharma TV, which was developed by some of the biggest uh, drug companies there are. Pharma TV is a shopping channel for medicines, but medicines are not ordinary products. Uh, there's no such thing as a safe medicine, so we should always take into account the balance between benefits and harms that is involved. If you think Pharma TV is going to be good for consumers, you've got to believe in Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny, and the Tooth Fairy. The fact is, what they want to do is to sell more drugs. Are you really going to get, if it's paid for by the pharmaceutical companies, objective information about your condition? They don't tell you about the risks. They don't tell you about alternative, maybe even better and less expensive drugs you might use. They don't tell you about alternatives to medication at all. It is an absolute scam, as far as I'm concerned, on consumers. Many consumer organizations worldwide, including many of our members, have fought very hard for the consumer protection that is in place we're urging drug companies to respect the legislation, stop trying to get around bans to DTCA. Concepts like Pharma TV should never be allowed to materialize to the level that they have been. CI's global campaign uh, goes under the title of Marketing Overdose, and I think that really encapsulates how consumers are feeling about the barrage of drug promotion from Big Pharma. We feel completely lied to, that we're not getting the full story and we don't know who to trust. And this is precisely why CI is joining with its members to put an end to unethical drug promotion.